What is the fastest and most fun way for adults to learn to play the piano? Hi, this is Dwayne Shin, and I've been teaching piano for lots of years, and I've taught literally thousands of people to play the piano, including little kids and people up in their 80s. So I've got a lot of experience, and a lot of people ask me that, what's the best, the fastest way to get started? There is no best way because there's lots of different ways, but the fastest way and maybe the most fun way, well, for sure the most fun way to get started playing piano. And I'm talking to adults now, not kids. For many years I own, owned a music studio that I operated and many kids and as well as adults came to that music studio. And I had other teachers working for me too in that studio. And uh, in, in that studio, of course, we, uh, we learned the traditional way. We uh, used music books such as John Schaum or Williams and so on, Doberge, and we progressed uh, from lesson one to lesson two and lesson three and so on. In other words, that's the way that kids traditionally start out, and it's a sound way, that's no, no doubt about that. But for adults, it's, it's, a lot of people are so busy in their careers that they don't really have time to do all that. So they wanna know what is the fastest way and most fun way that things start playing the songs that it, they can enjoy so they can be relaxing. So they don't want to go back to, uh, you know, up we go, down we go. Not that, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you have the patience to do that, then do that because you're learning good technique and good posture and so on and so forth. Okay, but uh, for adults, the probably the best way to start out and to get to playing fast is to learn chords. What you do is you learn chords, and you generally play chords in the left hand, although you can play them in the right hand too, and you play the melody in the right hand, okay? So let's just pretend you're a stark beginner. So uh, let's say that uh, our first song is Michael Row the Boat Ashore, okay? So after we learn the C chord and the F chord and the G seventh chord, that's all we need to learn on the left hand. Then we learn the right hand melody. Or maybe we want to learn when the saints go marching in. Now stick with me because uh, I'm not going to stick here. You're saying that's fast and fun. Yeah, it is, but I'll get to the main point in a second, okay? Uh, so if you want to play when the saints go marching in, you play, might start out like this. And you could learn how to do that in a week or so. Okay, it's not that complex. Now, where the fun comes in is you don't have to stay there very long at all. Once you learn what those chords are in the left hand, then you can get into a swing bass. A swing bass is where you go down and play. A, if this is a C chord, and it is, you could go down and play a low C on the first beat and then play those chords like that. Michael. the F chord, so I hit a low F. <laughs> I goofed on that. Okay, now that's step one. Then, then you'd probably learn how to play arpeggiated chords. That, that arpeggiation is where you break the chord up over, over space. You don't play C, E, G like that necessarily. But you can s spread it out like that. Listen. Okay. Or you might play uh, another way of breaking up chords in the left hand. It's called the Alberti's left bass. Watch this. Next step might be to add some chords in the right hand under the melody. So you take the same chords and you can play them under the melody. Okay, let's watch. Now 
that's starting to sound a little more like a song, isn't it? Okay, and you can take it a step further uh, by putting some color tones in. So, in other words, instead of C, you can play a C6 occasionally. is in the right hand. Like that. And you could put in some fillers, listen. See, like that, Just put in fillers. After a while, you could put in runs. Okay, so having said that, let me just walk through the chords with you. Our first step would be to learn major chords, and then minor chords, and diminished and augmented chords, and seventh chords, and sixth chords. With that, we can play tons and tons of songs, okay? Just knowing those, those few chords. And uh, then after that, we need to learn some piano styles. I just use some piano styles, but we methodically work through those, okay? And there's courses you can take on this sort of thing. I've got a host of courses myself at uh, playpianocatalog.com, uh, but you can take them from other people too. But the, the point is, learn your chords and then start playing style. So let's walk through the major chords. A major chord is made out of a root, third, and fifth of a major scale. A major scale is a row of notes like that. It goes from the root up to the octave, octavo, eight, octopus, and uh, the first note of the scale is the roots, the third note is uh, a third above that, and the fifth is a fifth above that, okay? So that's a C major chord, right? A C minor chord, you'd lower the third a half step, like so. A C diminished chord, you'd lower both the third and the fifth a half step. A C augmented chord, you'd raise the fifth a half step. A sixth chord, you'd add the sixth note of the scale to the chord. Or you could have a minor six, that's C minor six. A seventh is where you add the flat seventh to the chord. Not the seventh degree of the scale, but the flat seventh. So that's C seventh. That's another kind of chord called a C major seventh. Or you could have a C minor seventh, like so, okay? So you learn those chords in one key, and then you learn them in another key, and so on, until you know several keys and no several chords. Now you may say, well, wow, that's a lot to learn. No, we take it methodically. Take it step by step. Uh, and uh, you can, you know, absorb all this in a fairly short period of time if you're a, you know, intelligent adult with practice time to devote, okay? And then we get into uh, styles. Like I just said, we could play thirds under the melody or six. chords under the melody, we could use crunches such as this, we can, we can use blue notes, blue notes where you slide off a black key, and then you could start to break up chords like this, take the C, I'll take the C6 chord, and we could break it up, tuck our thumb under and go up the keyboard like that and then back down. You see, I'm just playing the four notes of the C6 chord, E, G, A, and C. I could do it in root position, or first inversion like that, or second inversion, or third inversion, and so on up the keyboard, okay? And pretty soon we could be having runs that are pretty rapid, or we can waterfall chords, waterfall chords where you take them from the top down, like so and kind of pyramid it down the keyboard, okay? I'm just giving you a quick overview of 
what you'd learn uh, over the course of time with these various techniques. And then eventually you'd be able to play songs using these techniques. Now, in the right hand, you either need to learn how to read that melody note, and that's not hard, just read a melody note in the treble clef. You don't have to read the bass clef because you, you can play using chord symbols, okay? But you either need to learn to read the music in the right hand or you need to have a decent ear where you can pick out the melody. And most people can do that, you can pick out a melody, okay? Most people can do that sort of thing. You may take a little trial and error, but you can do it, okay? Then once you do that, then you combine with the left-hand chords that I, I talked about and so on. So there's a brief overview of the fastest and the funnest way to get started playing the piano. Now, I call that the back door of piano playing, the back door of piano playing because you're not learning to read music first and learning all that technique. However, let me say this, that after you start playing some, learning those techniques, then you really need to go back and learn the correct fingering, for example, the way you learn, hold your, piano, your hands on the keyboard, the right technique, the right fingering, and, and uh, just a lot of techniques that, you know, that will improve your playing. You don't have to do it, and a lot of adults don't, but if, a lot of adults do too. They come in through the back door and they start playing chords and then they realize, hmm, I could play better, I could sound better if I use the correct fingering, if I uh, learn scales and so on and so forth, okay? So you, after you come in the back door, then you can do all those other things. I kind of was that way myself. I took piano lessons as a little kid, but I hated them. I once wore my baseball glove to my piano lesson. Poor Mrs. Graham, I feel sorry for her. Anyway, uh, I didn't take off on piano until I had a chance to, in high school to play with a, uh, our dance band, the school dance band. I was a freshman and the senior piano player just graduated so they didn't know who else to get so they got me and they weren't wild about it that's for sure because I didn't know anything about chords or anything but I learned fast. Once I got a chance to play there then <clears throat> I studied like crazy. I sent up to Popular Mechanics and I got a, a chord chart and on that chord chart I learned two chords C major 7th and D minor 7th and then I could play I could play Frankie and Johnny and I was thrilled okay so I was on my way and it was a short time then uh, you know within a year or so that I knew most of my chords and could play pretty well so uh, you come in the back door, but then you can uh, refine it by adding the other techniques, the traditional uh, piano learning techniques. So that's what I have to say today, and I hope this uh, makes sense to you. And in any case, pick the way that looks best to you and start in, because there's nothing more rewarding than piano playing for relaxation, just for fun. So thanks for being with me, and I'll say goodbye for now.